Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all mothers and mother figures who are here. As uh, you can see, there's some flowers here at the cross, and there were some flowers uh, back in the gathering space. Today, before you go, uh, we invite you to take uh, one of those flowers to uh, a mother in your life, whether it's your actual mother or somebody who's been a mother figure in your life. Uh, please take one of these out uh, to them as an expression of our love reaching out from this place. That's our mission, um, reaching out in love. So uh, make sure that mothers feel God's love through these beautiful uh, flowers today. Um, also, as we gather for worship, I want to welcome any visitors and guests who might be here, and we will be having communion today. And please know that as we have communion, you are welcome, because it is not I who am the host at the table, but Jesus Christ, and Jesus always stands with arms wide open. So please know that you are welcome to come and participate of that meal with us. As we begin worship, I'd like to invite any children who are here uh, to come forward and gather with me here at the font. All right, good morning. So we gather here at the baptismal font with water because water is such an amazing thing. Water gives us life. Water cools us off when we're hot. Water is the thing that gives life to those beautiful plants that we see growing all around us, the rains that come from the sky. It is in this water that we know that we are called and claimed as God's children. So if you can reach, get your hands into the water. And would you please say a prayer with me? Say, Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for giving us life. Giving us life. And thank you, and thank you for, all our mothers for all our mothers who give us life, give us life. and share your love, share your love. With, us. with us. Amen. Now, take some of this water, make the sign of the cross on your own forehead so that you can remember you are a child of God. <laughs> And then get your hand wet again, make the sign of the cross on somebody else's forehead so that they know they are a child of God. And one more time, get your hand wet a third time. And as you go back to your seats, get a couple of people wet so that they too can remember they are children of God. Now please rise as you're able as we sing our opening hymn, and we will go straight from the opening hymn into our Kyrie. I heard you guys sing it all together last week, and it was really good, so this week we'll sing it all together again, and I'll add some drums, so just be ready for that.
Let us pray. God of love, we praise, with praise we celebrate Jesus, who humbled himself so that every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
All right, now I need the help of some kids and youth who want to come uh, to the front and help me with a special message. Thank you guys for coming forward today. So today is Mother's Day. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. So you're going to remember to say thank you to your mother and be really especially good today. Yeah? Yeah? Come on. Say yes. There we go. All right. Good. Good. Um, But today I want your help because I want to give thanks today to a very special mother, um, somebody who shows us God's love, somebody who has put aside themselves for the sake of others, somebody who demonstrates what it means um, to be disciples in the world, somebody who shows us uh, to look up and to see others first in their lives. Now, this person has no idea. I'm going to ask her to come forward right now. Um, So, Donna, do you want to come up here? So Donna right now is the congregation president, and she stepped up when a congregation needed her very much. She was one who looked up and said, okay, I'm going to put myself aside and I'm going to put others in front uh, of me and care for them and nurture them. And you have been a mother to this congregation. If it wasn't for the hard work that you've done over the past year, we wouldn't be where we are today. So once again, let's thank Donna for all her hard work. And so, kids who are gathered here, if you want to come around, and can you put an arm on her shoulder or grab a hand? Um, Let's make sure that she is cared for, and would you say a prayer with me? Say, Dear God, God, bless Donna Donna. and all the work that she does. does. Thank you you for showing your love love to us us. through her. her. Amen. You guys can go back and sit down. Good morning. The Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 6. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Here ends the reading. Our sermon reading today comes from the letter of the Philippians uh, by Paul, the second chapter. Uh, Just a word about the translation. Anytime you see anointed in the voice translation, they try and um, make sure they translate every word. So instead of writing Christ, they put anointed because that's all Christ means. It's just a transliteration of the, the Greek word that means the anointed one. So just when you hear anointed in this translation, just hear Christ uh, also. If you find any comfort in being in the anointed, if his love brings you some encouragement, if you experience true companionship with the Spirit, if his tenderness and mercy fill your heart, then, brothers and sisters, here is one thing that would complete my joy. Come together as one in mind and spirit and purpose, sharing in the same love. Don't let selfishness and prideful agendas take over. Embrace true humility and lift your heads to extend love to others. Get beyond yourselves in protecting your own interests. 
Be sincere and secure your neighbor's interests first. In other words, adopt the mindset of Jesus, the anointed. Live with his attitude in your hearts. Remember, though he was in the form of God, he chose not to cling to equality with God, but he poured himself out to fill a vessel brand new, a servant in form and a man in deed. The very likeness of humanity, he humbled himself, obedient to death, a merciless death on the cross. So God raised him up to the highest place and gave him the name above all names. So when his name is called, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth and below, and every tongue will confess, Jesus, the anointed one, is Lord, to the glory of God our Father. So now, my beloved, obey as you have always done, not only when I am with you, but even more so, when I can't be, continue to work out your salvation with great fear and trembling because God is energizing you so that you will desire and do what always pleases him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a, a perfect letter to be reading on Mother's Day. Uh, the letter to the Philippians um, was written to the first community that Paul started in Europe. He started in Asia Minor, then made his way to Europe, and Philippi was the first place he stopped. And there he founded the church with women. Women were the foundation of this church. It was Lydia. Lydia, who he found, she was a merchant worker, and she sold purple cloths, which was the most expensive type of cloth that you could uh, have and to, to spend. And so she had a huge house. And as he converted her and her family, uh, she offered herself and her home up to be the church. And so there in her house was founded the first church in Europe, in Philippi. And the community began to gather um, and so it's women who have been leaders within the church, not just right now with Donna, like we prayed for, but from the very beginning, even in Philippi. And even before that, there were women gathered around Jesus Christ. It was women who were the first ones to go to the tomb to hear and see Jesus, to bring the word to the rest of the disciples that Christ is risen and that he has risen indeed. This church stands and many servant women who have risen up the church from the very beginning. And so we are indebted to all those mothers. And these mothers are women who give of themselves for the sake of others, who show us that you have to look up first, that you can't think of your own interests, but you have to put yourself aside for the sake of others in order to do the work of Christ. And I can thank my mother for showing me some of that love too. My mother, who's uh, a pastor's wife, but not just a pastor's wife, but also a mother to us and now a grandmother and also works as an occupational therapist taking care of many other uh, little children. She's a woman who has always put others before her. Uh, it's often at meals that we would try and get her to sit down. Please, Mom, stop serving other people. Just eat with us. But she couldn't. She had to make sure every single other person was taken care of. And then she would finally sit down and we'd say, okay, now you're eating. But then she would get up to start doing like, no, just sit back down. We want to be with you. We want to spend time with you. But it was out of that love and affection and her always giving that we were able to learn what it means to give of ourselves first for the sake of the other. And right now, this is a message that we need to hear loudly and clearly, not just in this congregation, but all around the country, to stop putting your own selfish and prideful agenda before you, but lift up your head and see others first. We're living in a very divisive time when people are coming forward to only see their own agenda and rather than seeking for truth and seeking the best for others, they just want to hear what they want to hear. They want their agenda put forward first and we need mothers to stand up, to rise up and to teach us again to look out first. But not just those mothers, but Jesus Christ. We need to share this gospel of a God who decided to humble himself completely. A God who would be born 
through a mother, through Mary, a God who would be born just a fragile little baby, a God who would make himself completely vulnerable and put himself into our hands, a God who would walk alongside us and not just become a God for a little split second to save the world and go away, but a God who would go through it all who would feel what it, goes, uh, what it feels like to grow, to learn, to go through puberty even, a God who would learn to be a, a, a teenage boy, a God who would learn to walk amongst friends and to create relationships, a God who would be betrayed by friends and ultimately put to death, a God who would go through everything that we go through. And this God has decided to show us this amazing love so that we would learn to put ourselves second, so that we would open up our eyes and learn that we need to do uh, life, that we need to do God's love for the sake of the neighbor first. That when we gather together as a church, we're not trying just to please ourselves, but we do this for the sake of others. We gather together not just for ourselves, not just so that it feels good, but we do this so that our hearts might be expanded, so that we might learn to put ourselves second and to share God's love with those who need it most. That our money, our time, our talents are not just for ourselves, but for others. And we're learning as a church to do that. We're learning to embrace the other. You guys have joined me in learning to sing in different languages, and that's putting the neighbor first. So I thank you for joining me in doing that. And we have now a couple of members who have Spanish as their first language. And so I've begun leading the, the table prayers in Spanish also, so we can learn to put our neighbor first, not just ourselves. And I'm even in the works of trying to learn um, the words in sign language, because we have several people here who are hard of hearing and who know sign language first. And so we need to learn to do church not for ourselves, but for the sake of others. We need to learn to do church not just to feel comfortable, but that our hearts might be opened up for the sake of other people, not for our own agendas, but for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself, becoming a human, even to the point of being a servant, even to the point of death, death on a cross. And that love opens us up for the sake of one another. And we can share that love with the world that needs it, because that's our mission. That's who we say we are. People of God, empowered by word and sacrament, reaching out in love. And so this is your challenge this week. Try and share that love with others. Look not to yourself first, but look to your neighbors first. Look and see if there's someone who is in need. Look and see if there's someone around you who's sitting alone. Look and see if there's someone who is hungry. Look and see if there's somebody here who you don't know. Say hello to them. Welcome them. Say, we love you. We care for you. How can we serve you? Look not to yourself first, but to others. Give thanks for those amazing women in your lives who have shown you that love. And ultimately, give thanks to God. For God gave us the ability to do that. Gave us the ability to look up from ourselves and to extend that love to those many people who are in need of it. Let's go out into the world to teach the world what it means to share that amazing love and grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now please rise as you're able as we continue with our sermon hymn.
And now let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. And we begin by professing that faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of of all grace and mercy we thank you for the gift of your son jesus christ for humbling yourself to walk among us and with us to show us your love to show us your way of caring and reconciliation and thinking not of yourself first but of others stir up your holy spirit that the church all around the world might be gleaming examples of this love Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for all those who are struggling in the midst of natural disasters, of war, and of violence. We especially pray for those in Hawaii, for those in Syria, those in Paris, and those who are experiencing those things right now. Lord, in your mercy. God, we thank you for mothers for those women in our lives that show us your care, your compassion, your selflessness, and your never-ending love. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up to you all your saints, special children of God sent here to demonstrate your love to us. And we thank you for giving us Doris Anderson to know and to love and we entrust her into your care and mercy. We pray for all of her friends and family who are mourning, mourning her death. And we have hope in the life everlasting in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up to you all those who are struggling with health. We pray for John Spoden, Colleen Schroeder, Johns Hollifson, Ron Brown, Doris Anderson, Martel Onsrud, Beverly Schaber, Janine Milis, Isaac Johnson, Jean Arnold, Joe and Laura Polzine, Don Lunderberg, Sandy Valentine, Janet Herman, Juanita and Mick Jensen, Lori Ellinger, Fern Severson, Thomas Larson, and all those who we name out loud now. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, we pray for this community, for Faith Lutheran Church, that we might live into our mission to be people of God empowered by word and sacrament, reaching out in love. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And share a sign of God's love with one another.
for the gift that you give to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Open up our eyes to see that these are gifts to share so that all might know and experience your great abundance in this world. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of heaven. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Y de igual manera, después de haber cenado, él tomó la copa, dio gracias y lo dio a todos, diciendo, Esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre, derramada por ustedes y por todo el mundo para el perdón del pecado. Hagan esto en memoria mía. And now all of us gather together around the Lord's table. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As you come forward to receive this holy sacrament, you may come to extend your hands and receive the bread and then dip it either into the wine, which is red wine, or grape juice, which is white grape juice. If you have a nude for a gluten-free option, we do have that available. Please just ask. And again, I will say, please come. Know that you are welcome, for it is not I who am the host at the table, but Jesus Christ. And Jesus always stands with arms wide open. Please come. Know that the table is ready. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, grant you grace and keep you in his peace. Amen.
It's my honor and my joy today to welcome some new members, so at this time I'd like to have the Meyer family come forward. You guys can just come right up here so we right. can Right, we'll see have you uh, come up on the steps so you can just, everybody can see you. <laughs> I'd like to introduce everybody to the Meyer family. This is Dan, who is a police officer in Whitewater. Tara, who is an engineer with Strand in Madison. And their children, um, Zeke, who is, how old Zeke? Four years old. And Everly Grace who is going to be three years old tomorrow. Oh. And they're both waiting to be big brother and big sister for a new baby in June, I believe, right? So we would like to welcome the Meyer family today. <laughs> Dan, Tara, Zeke, and Everly, both your work and your rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and evening, at work and at play, all the days of your life? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, you have knit these, your servants, into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon them in their commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome our newest members. Thank you. By the way, I think we have some refreshments in the back, and be sure to say hello and welcome as you depart today. A few announcements. I um, want to start out with some thank yous. Today was uh, the last time you'll hear the Faith Ringers for the season. Not the last time ever. We'll resume again in October like we usually do. But speaking on behalf of the Ringers, I feel like this has been a year of real growth for us as players, and I hope you've appreciated and enjoyed our music. Um, a, lo a, lot of that, a lot of that is due to the leadership of Sherry, who has encouraged us, who has uh, brought us chances to go to workshops and to participate and learn more about handbells, and I think we've all been become more confident because of it. We actually did pretty well today, you guys, so <laughs> good job. I'd also like to say thank you for everyone who worked on the rummage sale. If you helped at the rummage sale or brought something to the rummage sale, would you just stand up for a quick minute? Oh, gee, look at that. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. And I would like to thank Carol and Jack Zimney again for their leadership. I believe they've been doing this for 17 years. Is that right, Carol? And uh, we, they have everything organized and everything went, went so well yesterday. And I think around $2,000 was raised. Does that Over. sound right? Over. Over $2,000. Yeah. And that money goes to our youth. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Who are going to... Um, where are you going? Houston. In June? Okay, I got that part of it right. So thank you for everybody who participated in the rummage sale. On a more serious note, um, many of you know that pa Doris Anderson passed away on Thursday. Maybe some of you didn't know. I was one who didn't know until this morning. And, um, you know, two weeks ago we had that wonderful reception, her birthday party that she planned she uh, wanted certain foods, and she wanted decorations, and she wanted, I don't know, some of you remember maybe that were here that day when she did the reading, and that was the first time in her life she'd ever stood up and done a reading in church. And how brave to be 100 years old and stand up and do that. 
And on Mother's Day, I'd just like to say that although Doris was not a mother herself physically, she uh, mothered many other women. And I think, as all women in our congregation know, it's not just about your own mother. It's about everybody in your life, your friends, uh, your coworkers, and all your relationships that mother you and make your world a better place. So thank you to all those people that have been mothers in everyone's life. And as a tribute to that today, we have flowers available for you to take. Please take one. Uh, there are many up front. There are also some on the back table. But please uh, give one to someone just to show them that they've been a mother to you in your life. Finally, next Sunday is another big day here at Faith. It's Confirmation Sunday. And speaking as uh, a person who doesn't have children, I think we all have children here at Faith Lutheran, no matter if they're our physical children or not. And don't look at next Sunday as a Sunday to say, oh, I better, you know, it's going to be a big crowd. We want a big crowd because we want these young people to know that they are loved and supported and part of our family and part of God's family in the world. So next Sunday, May 20th, I think, is Confirmation Sunday, and it also happens to be Pentecost Sunday, I think. So where are your red? Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Uh, just a couple of uh, additional announcements. So for Doris, uh, the funeral will be on Thursday, uh, 9.30. We'll begin a visitation here at the church. 10.30 will be the service, uh, and there will be uh, a service at the graveside and a lunch following. So please know that you are welcome to come and celebrate her life on that day. Uh, with the youth, just wanted to say that all the funds that we raised yesterday were enough for us to pay for the vehicle, our 15-passenger van that we're driving all the way down, and the anticipated cost for the fuel to go all the way down there. So thank you so much. That is a huge help to, for us in that. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to say, uh, in two weeks is another celebration Sunday. We're going to be doing Memorial Day at a picnic at Peace Park, and that's over on Rockport Road. There are two entrances. Each, either one, if you haven't been to Peace Park, will get you to the right place. We're going to be worshiping right at the pavilion that's in between the park and the pool, so you can park at either one of those parking lots. Uh, there's going to be a big celebration underway. There's food gonna, that's going to be there. If you want to help bring some of that food, there are sign-ups in the back, so just make sure to sign up so that we, we can pull all of that together and we can celebrate as a community out, uh, out in God's great creation. And then just one final thing is that we do have Meals on Wheels uh, week coming up that we sponsor. So there's a sign up in the back too. There's still a couple of gaps to fill. So if you are someone who's got some time to deliver some food to people who are in need, please do that. Look for the sign up that's in the back. There's just a couple of open dates. So please sign up and uh, help some people get some food. Now, uh, please rise as you're able for a final blessing. I'm not sure we've sung this song before, but I'm going to play it through once, and we're going to sing it three times.
find a blessing, yeah. Made a road.